That's right! Look who it is, and guess what time it is! Hello, all my friends and fellow FTFLers! It is I, Brett Siever, host of the FTFL Weekly Update, owner of the Hulkamaniacs, and lest you not forget, your king and pressure is the word. We are now just four weeks to go in the regular season, and each and every team's quest for that super all-important seventh win. Nobody got there this week. Marks and Linkowitz were oh so close, yet so far away as both had their doors blown smooth off. But more on that later. Um, you know, it is week nine, although I should say that going into week ten, and we still haven't seen Le'Veon Bell. Supposedly the tweet was farewell Miami. I'm not entirely sure what that means. If you're Andy, it was farewell to your season long ago. Although he did win this week and finds himself just one game out of the playoffs. Now another team that is just on the cusp of the playoffs had a huge trade today. Dalvin Cook for a first round pick. I guess that means the, health, the hamstring is fully healthy. However, we have seen this approach by this exact same team last year, mind you. Will it have the same results? Time will tell. Speaking of trades, the trade deadline is this Thursday. And of course today, Tuesday, election day in America. And I, well, I'd like to say that we have somehow, some way, landed him again, folks. That's right. The, it pains me to see this, President of the United States of America, Mr. Yeah. Trump, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me here, yes, sir. Yes, well... I appreciate you inviting I, me every year for election day. Well, I don't know how you do it and how you find time for this, because you have to be a busy man, um, but here you are. I don't have much going on in my life. Well, I'd like to think you do, being the president, but then again, I'm not you. You have minor thankfully. brain power compared to me. You know what? Speaking of brain power, can we just move on? Can we do this? Are you now? I I would like to think now. This time, often in the past, you come and you rant a lot about your own self and all the things you want to do. Now, President Obama was really good about kind of reaching out to the sports community. President Obama, right? You know, really good about reaching out to the sports community. So I think tonight, I would love to hear some of your feedback on these games, if you don't mind. As long as we don't have any kneeling going on during the games, I am okay with that. You know what? Actually, we're sitting down right now. Is that okay? As long as the National Anthem is not playing. Okay, well, maybe later. All right, you know what? First game on the schedule, Ryan Deesum and his big old, saggy, gross, and smelling of dead mouse titties and balls. We need better family planning for those titties and balls. Sure. At 5-3, and three, taking on Mana, three-time Lucky Pants champ, you sent seven cents short Mana at 6-2. and two. And this one wasn't even close. 151 and a half to 115. Now, if you score 115 points and you have that kind of huge... You should have a good week. Right. Now, it was a great week for Jeff Marks. However, he did not get the win. He does not get to number seven. He stays at number six. He is six and three. You look like you want to say something. Feels like a pretender to me here. I, I, I just feel like Ooh. it's false... Praise to this team. I, oh. I just can't see it. Fake, fake team. Fake team. Fake team. Okay, well, six and three. You heard it from the leader of the free world, fake team. If you're Ryan, Matt Ryan dropped 42 points. The buzzsaw on Jeff Markser. Alvin Kamara, 26. James White, 21. Julio and Kelty, 21 and a half each. Huge week. However, in all of this, 151 plus points. Tariq Cohen scores half a point. The Rams defense scores... One point. Horrible team. Horrible players. Horrible. And he, he still puts up 150-some points. That he, ain't nothing. However, there wasn't nothing on the bench. Couldn't, could have only tied the record of 155, said earlier this year. If you're Mark Sure, you wasted a performance by Kareem Hunt, 30 and a half. James Conner has been all world all season, even though, as I pointed out last week, Jeff Markser picked him up only to prevent Andy from acquiring him. Boy, hasn't that worked out. Smartest move he's done in 30 years. In 30 years. Deshaun Watson, 18 points. OJ Howard was 16. Markser survived the bye week. 
David Johnson, bye. TJ Yeldon, bye. AJ Green, bye. Evan Ingram, bye. Those folks. Jeff Markser, bye. Oh, those folks combined to average almost 40 points. Now, still wouldn't have closed the gap for Jeff Markser this week. Next week. Another tough test, but more on that later. Next up, the King of the North. Now, what a great team that is. Okay, so I was going to ask you, Mr. Trump, um, this now is a team formerly known as Cray America, who we, you very proudly just a couple years ago came and supported strongly on this. Of course. On this show, your ties to them are still, even though you are the president and are supposed to distance yourself from any sort of money-making ventures, you're saying you're still behind the scenes working with with the king of the north of course i'm uh, king of the north i'm king of north america king of north korea uh, why not he's king of the north we get along great oh, hold, hold on the north america those are two separate you know what fine whatever um taking on linkowitz at six and two linkowitz coming in with all sorts of steam now i should remind you before this week started the owner of the King of the North called his shot, said, I'm going to break your record. And he did. No, he, he didn't. It's no, fake the, news. the record was 155, Mr. No, Trump. No, no. And the King of the North mustered 152 and a half. Huge week. Huge, right? Huge. Huge. That, okay, that's, oh, I didn't say it quite right. Giant. Sorry. That has, again, nothing to do with what we're talking about. John puts up 101. Not enough. If you're the king of the north, the Bears defense stomped all over. Nathan Peterman for 30 points. Patrick Mahomes, 28. McCaffrey, 24 and a half. Melvin Gordon, 20 and a half. And now you Fake add... Fake news. Melvin Gordon does not play for king of the north. Sorry. You know what? That was a test. And you passed. Of it's not I often pass. I expect you to... Josh Gordon. 20 and a half points. Melvin Gordon plays for the Monkees. You are at least paying attention. Now, I'm not on the Fox News Network, but apparently you have been watching just a little. Um, Tyler Lockett, one and a half. Dan Bailey, seven. The only two players on his team not in double digits. Uh, if you're Lincoln, and they still set the record. You didn't set the record. You the fell. North, King of the North set the record, you not me. Fell, okay, they fell three points short. Three. Three points. <sighs> If you're Linkowitz, Fitzmagic, 28. Now, Fitzmagic was on the waiver wire. Fitzmagic seems like he's the kind of guy that Linkowitz would want on his team. He's kind of the underdog player. Um, Minnesota's defense, 24. Jimmy Graham, 10. And the keeper, only 7. Now, mind you, last week on the show, I called you out John Linkowitz. Now, we don't know what you put on the chat board. It showed up as a bunch of gibberish and a lot of computer code. But I've checked my phone all week. I don't have one single text. I don't have one single email. There has been nothing since I laid down that challenge and said, if you truly think this is the reason your team is doing as well as it is, then you declare right now that Stephen Gaskowski is one of your two keepers for next year, and it has been radio silence. I believe the King of the North keeper outscored Linkowitz kicker by about 17 points. And the King of the North keeper was... Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. Well, I mean, see, he's the only one left since they've been wheeling and dealing and trading away That's all their right. players. Which, again, add to this team going forward, Dalvin Cook. Yet another first-round pick given away. Future assets being sold off like imaginary money. And he still has more than the Hulkamaniacs. Amazing. Might be the only true statement out of this man's mouth all night long. Last year, you're going to need a bigger boat sold off future assets for present gains, and it didn't work. Now, I kind of would like to compare this to your policies towards the environment. However, we don't have time the to what? get in to that because we've got to talk about my team. The Hulkamaniacs coming in in a smooth 500, 4 and 4, taking on the Architect at 2 and 6. And I think it kind of looks and appears to fake some. team. The Architect is a fake team? He's he's not a team at all. The Hulkamaniacs are the fake team. Uh, no, they're not a fake team. How many Actually, times have they scored over 100 points on the year? 2003 FTFL league champion, Do you have one three Mr. Trump. Week this week? Or this year? I don't think so. I, I haven't. But you know what? The beauty of this game is I don't need to score 100 points to win. I just need to score more 
than my opponent, which I did this week when I put up 71.5 to the Architects, 56.5, moving myself to 5-4, and four. Cooper Cup, welcome back, 16.5, Aaron Rodgers, 16, and I'll be honest, a good but disappointing night, Todd Gurley again continues to, ch continues to churn out touchdowns, 13, Kyle the Bum Rudolph, one point, you have completely fallen off the face of the planet, thanks Dustin Hopkins, big time pickup, I was led to believe that kickers win ball games, we won, but not because of you, you bum. Two points. He wasn't a keeper. What can I say? Well, that's possible, I guess. Jared Goff, 30 points on the bench. Uh, Duke Johnson. The coach goes. Duke Johnson goes, rises to the top. I don't think I can trust a Cleveland player. I really don't think that's what's going. You'll Duke all over if you play a Cleveland player. You'll do. Oh, oh, yes. Brilliant. It, that was gross. Uh, Devontae Adams, 11 for the Architect. Uh, Case Keenum, 10. Five of his players were at four points or below. He will, with this loss this week, guaranteed finish below 500 on the season. And oh, by the way, that wasn't the worst thing he was involved with this week. More on that later. Smell that? Well, not necessarily the dud, but I think you know what's happening. Well, we've covered three games. We've got two to go. It is time now for us to take that break because our friend Adam Saltmarsh, owner of the Radioactive Monkeys, would like to share this public service announcement with you. I give you, don't be salty. Welcome to Don't Be... Wait, what happened? Like, Don't Be Salty, was we lost the feed. Um, I don't... What are you I'm, doing? I'm sorry, Hulkamanis. We got a... Important announcement here tonight on election yeah, evening. Yeah, you probably need to come down a little bit so they can see your face, not that <laughs> they want we to. Do that? No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the camera's on, President Trump. I, I, I don't care about cameras. I care about election nights. Just, I'm signing this executive order. Take out the Don't Be Salty segment. What? This is an important announcement. Uh, what? Uh, really? Uh, we only have a few hours left on election night to yes. push for my campaign. Lock her up. Lock her up. Wait, wait, hold on. Your campaign? It's election night, is it not? It, it is I election am the, night. I am the president. Right, but the election is, we're not voting to, for, no. This, this, this is fake news. Try, stop trying to throw yeah. off the voters of America. So Tonight, I have several very important announcements. I can't wait. Please listen. No. Oh, I, I'm. Um, we have a migrant caravan full of millions of people. Marching north towards our border, Canadians. The Canadians are north. Militants from ISIS, and I am going to send troops to our border to protect it. The Canadians are north of our border. What are you talking about? North America. They're they're in North America. They're coming this way. The Canadians, come on, not... get with it. Let's just you need keep to going. The news. Keep going. We got more to cover tonight. And with my policies, this caravan will never exercise birthrights when the, if they get into the border because. What? I am signing an executive order to stop birthrights. This is the fantasy football show. What are you doing? It's election night. I'm making a push for election night. Um, so, don't worry, America. If you vote for me, nor everything else, everything else is fake news, I will protect you what? This, from this horrid scare. The, sca right. there's, what, there's, the only scare is if, how much longer you plan on talking. It's all yours again. I just had to get that out there one last push. Just, you know, d I don't again, know. the Canadians are north about of the you. border. Uh, these people are trying to escape conditions in their whole... I, if, if you want to... Uh... Apologies to Adam Saltmarsh. I'm sorry your segment got interrupted. I don't have much I can do with the executive order at this moment in time. So I, maybe next week I'll see what I can do. Um, speaking of next week... If you're Eric, you're looking forward to next week because this week you came in at five and hundred and four and four, taking on the pit of misery, dilly dilly, and at two and six. This game you thought well you needed to win, you should have won, and you didn't. You got blown up one twenty four and a half to sixty one. He doubled up your score. He doubled up your score. Is this some of your people's work? What's going on here? Been this here is what will happen if will the migrant ban stop goes using north. using your phone that the Chinese can get into. Will you put that away and turn it off? No. This is what will happen unless you follow me. Vote Trump. Not. It's not your election. This is a referendum on you. We're not voting for you. It's what is fake news? You got doubled up, Eric. You got doubled up by the pit of misery, dilly dilly. Uh, for the pit of misery, dude, 
Michael Thomas, welcome back. 30 points. Tevin Coleman, biggest week of the year, 28 and a half. Russell, I can't stand you. Wilson with 18. Um, for Eric, again, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. You started the wrong one again. You should have started Breeze. Instead, you went with Rivers. It wouldn't have mattered because you got your clock clean. Another but pretender. Another, well, I wouldn't necessarily disagree. This is with, more of a contender. This is not yours to touch. Now stop that. Uh, just, again, please, I'm trying to. Uh, Brandon Cooks, 15. Greg Zerline, 11. Five-year players are under four points. Um, if you're Andy, oddly enough, as much as your team you claim to be tanking or ready to be done and looking forward to next year because of all the things that have happened, including the Le'Veon Bell disaster, you were only one game out of the playoffs. One game with four to go. It isn't over for you yet. So you say. Uh, I Just going off a strictly numbers thing, I don't know if you apply that to some of your decisions, actual facts, but that's for another time and place. Uh, lastly, in the last game of the week, Radioactive Monkeys 5-3 and three, taking on Pump, the demonic love child of Trump and Putin. I love it. It's what a great name. I don't know how he comes up with this I'm stuff. blaming you, Adam. This one's on you. Uh, the battle of the Adams, mind you, was really a low-scoring affair. 72.5 for Saltmarsh, 56 for Swart. Swart falls to 3-6. and six. However, same record as Andy. One game out of the playoffs. For Saltmarsh, DeAndre Hopkins. Contender. 17. I don't think that he just Special traded away right Cook. Here. And his team is faltering. 50, he only scored 56 points. How With a team he... name like that, how, how, how can you fail? Tom Brady, 14. Uh, Melvin Gordon, this is the right Gordon here. With 14 and a half. Uh, Antonio Brown, 10 and a half. Mike Evans, off week, only a half point. Only one and a half points on the bench. This was an awful, awful week as far as points go for Saltmarsh. However, didn't matter. Gets the win. Moves to 6 and 3 in a share of the South Division. If you are Adam Swart, your team again falls to 3 and 6. Not out of the playoffs yet, but soon. Lastly, stud the dud and the decent update, stud of the week, Matt Ryan. 42 points on a massive performance by Decent's team this week. Uh, buzzsaw worthy, if you will. Dud of the week, Swart and his Baltimore defense. Baltimore came out the gates hot. Over the last few weeks, that defense has combined to score three points. By the way, also, it was three points that the King of the North fell short of the record that you have talked about a couple dudes. times now. I, I don't know. Three what points about. in three weeks. It might be time to find a new defense. And again, I think you're done spending money. You are selling the farm. D some update. And I told you we'd get to it. Matt, you picked up a player who was on the IR. I don't know what to say. You found the website, you made an attempt to improve your team, and then picked up someone who was on IR. At least you didn't play him. Yet. That is brilliant. Yet. Yet. This is, this, maybe this is a, maybe you haven't thought of this. Maybe this is like the keeper strategy. Trying something different. <laughs> to get different results. I know that John. seems to be something that you would be into as well. Uh, you're giving John a run for his money because, oh, by the way, John did keep a kicker. And I'm also going to say, the King of the North, you're on the decent update as well. You're selling future assets for present gains. You attempted this last year, and it didn't work. Some would say if you try to do the same thing and expect different results, that's the definition of insanity. But I don't want to be labeling anyone here tonight. And he's still got more first-round picks than the Hulkamanians. I don't know how that works. I wouldn't expect you to. Week 10 is coming straight at us. And boy, oh boy, we got some games. Battle for first place supremacy in the North. Hulkamaniacs coming in at 5-4. and four, Taking on Mana Six wins and three-time Lucky Pants. Seven cents short of a dollar. Shh, shh, shh. Are you okay? Okay. Mana at six and three. Ryan Deesom and his you know what's at six and three. Also taking on the pit of misery. Dilly Dilly at three and six. King of the North four and five. Desperately needing a win against the radioactive monkeys. Not scoring a lot of points for the monkeys. Scoring a lot of points for the King of the North. Two game lead. 
but the point differential is going to favor Sid on this one. Don't be salty. Oh, Pump, three and six, taking on Linkowitz is six and three, looking to get on the right side of the ledger again. And lastly, the pack attack, probably more so than anyone else, maybe as much as Sid at four and five needing a win, taking on the architect who was all but given up. Couple things before we get out of here. Um, Mr. Trump, I don't know how anyone knew that you were going to be here tonight, but I do have a package that was delivered for you. They didn't say who it was from. I would open it somewhere else, please. Um, go Fargo. Keep working. Keep striving. Get better. All of us here at the Weekly Update are pulling for you. We're going to moment cue the music. Four weeks to go, folks. Election night. Pressure abounds. We'll see you next time on the FTFL Weekly Update. This is Brett. Peace. You forgot your package. Take this with you. Goodbye, Mr. Trump. Thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate, I guess, having you again. We'll see you next time.